It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Bob Nilsson, president and founder of the 100 Entrepreneurs Project. Bob, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. The 100 Entrepreneurs Project, it's a Maryland-based nonprofit. The mission is to provide, and some of this is going to come off the website, wounded veterans and their caregivers and families with stepping stones to their next careers. To that end, 100 Entrepreneurs Foundation through 100 Entrepreneurs Project schedules monthly luncheons in the spring and fall in Bethesda near Walter Reed National Medical Center and Fort Belvoir. It was through one of these luncheons I met Bob. I was asked to speak at one of them. I was honored to do so, and I thank uh, Anne and Amanda Weathersby and Bob Nielsen for allowing me to speak at that. Your background, Bob, you're a veteran. Yes. Tell me v- about Vietnam that. Vietnam veteran. Enlisted officer? Officer. I joined the Marine Corps first day of college in 1959. I got commissioned in 63, went on active duty, and then in 65, when we decided to go into Vietnam, I was getting near the end of my three years and decided to stay for an extra year and volunteered for Vietnam. I didn't want to miss this great opportunity that I'd been training for. And was that formative to you? <laughs> was, was it formative? <laughs> it Some proved, questions I asked that are just that. Yeah, it proved that I, to be everything that I didn't expect. I was brought up and raised on Victory at Sea and John Wayne winning in all the movies. And after about three days in Vietnam, I was a combat engineer with 1st Shore Party Battalion. But we were attached to 5th Marines on their combat operations doing medevacs and ammo resupply and things like that. And it's not like Victory at Sea. It's not like John Wayne. It's real world. It's real. Mm -hmm. And when you get off the helicopter, uh, you don't turn the switch off. It doesn't go away. And so I spent, did a tour there, ended up, I broke my leg. I wasn't in combat and ended up being medevac back to the States. They operated on Guam and then sent me back to uh, St. Albans Naval Hospital in Brooklyn where me and two sergeants became the Marine liaison for about a 1,000 wounded, had no idea what the hell we were doing. Uh, there weren't many visitors in those days. It was just family. Really Did you grow up near Brooklyn? I uh, grew up on Long Island. Okay. You could tell by my Long Island A little accent. bit. Bottle of beer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I was at St. Albans, and then I got stationed was stationed at Marine Barracks, Brooklyn, but at St. Albans, and uh, was a Marine liaison there. And... Decided that uh, going back to Vietnam was not a good choice, and there were other things to do, so I went back to a career in Turner Construction. Yeah, and so you had already started with Turner Construction, right? right? Correct. Turner Construction, for those not aware, is a, a wee little company. Biggest contractor in the United States. Biggest construction really big contractor the in the United States. And according to what I just read, construction volume of $10 billion, and that was in 2014, so I'm sure, uh, judging by all the cranes I see throughout every city in the United States, it's probably gone up or stayed around there. Right. And when I retired, I was president of Turner International. But I'd always said I was going to stay in close touch with veterans that I knew. And other than a handful of friends, and then I started going to reunions, I never stayed in touch with the wounded. So when we made the decision, I guess it was just about 18 years ago, to go into Iraq, I said, this is going to last more than 30 days and we're going to have a lot of wounded. Let me sneak over to Bethesda Naval Hospital, Mm -hmm. sneak in the back door, talk to the Marine liaison, and go up and visit some of the wounded. I was afraid we wouldn't have visitors with this war like Vietnam. It would only be family again. So was your original intention just Marines or anybody? No, anybody coming in, anybody wounded, but I went through the naval system because that's what I knew. I later on, through an Army buddy that lost a leg in uh, Vietnam, went started going to Walter Reed, mm-hmm. and then I started going to both. And what became a visit a couple of times a month became four or five days a week going in to see the wounded. Do you remember that period of time where you were getting out and wasn't sure what your future was going well, to be? Well, I, I was getting out, but I was an engineer, and I 
joined Turner Construction before I went to Vietnam. So you already had a good idea. So I had a pretty good idea what I was going to do. But something in you knew that a lot of people didn't know what they were going to oh, do. Oh, yeah. And and I knew that from my experience in the military and my experience in staying in touch with it after I got out, it's a big jump to go from being in the military, particularly when you're a young man or woman, 21, 22 years old. Many come from homes that are somewhat dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. The only really good home they've had has been the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, or Air Force, or Coast Guard, and they've provided some stability for them. Stability and, and schedule. Which... And, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, all of a sudden, bingo, they're faced with getting out, and in the case of wounded or the caregivers, having lost a limb, having lost an arm, worse traumatic brain injury, or a lot of other combinations, so... So I kind of thought initially if I could be there to talk them through this, it would be a help. Let's take a break. Sure. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Bob Nilsson, president and founder of 100 Entrepreneurs Project, a Maryland-based nonprofit. The website is what, Bob? 100entrepreneurs.org. Uh, and it's uh, you can we're on Facebook also. Just Google uh, or search 100 Entrepreneurs and you'll see us. We have a group. And, Twitter, yeah. too. I saw you. I yeah, found you on, on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, we're on Instagram and we're on a bunch of things. Do you so. mind me asking how old you are? Almost 79. <laughs> and um, that's you on Twitter. That's yeah. your own personal account. Oh, yeah. And you do tweet from... Oh, yeah. yeah you like I Twitter? Tweet. Oh, yeah. I, I like Facebook much more because I found the wounded veterans and their caregivers, they use Facebook for communication. So mm-hmm. I've probably got 600 wounded vets that I stay in touch with on Facebook. They're not on every day. But that became the means of communications before I even knew Facebook existed. And they taught me. You recognize that there's going to be some people coming out of war that are going to need some help. Right. And what what I started doing initially, I got together with a lot of friends in a group called Urban Land Institute. It's a big real estate group. And Mm we raised a couple hundred thousand dollars and started with scholarships. But the truth is the VA does a great job with scholarships and ours, we, it wasn't a big need there for that. So then I got Turner interested in building some buildings at Walter Reed. We built the amputee center at the old Walter Reed, mm-hmm. a temporary building 16th called Street. Matsey, 16th? Georgia Avenue. Georgia Avenue, yeah, it's Georgia Avenue. Sorry. And then we built the brain injury center, the NICO center at the new Walter Reed. And then we built Fort Belvoir. And this was the, you pushing for all this. Oh, I pushed, yeah. And I, I helped get Turner interested in it. Uh, the guys in Turner, Peter Davern, the president, Chris Yarling, the guy that ran their government work, became very interested in this work. And we ended up doing these projects. But more importantly, from my perspective, we were hiring wounded vets while they were in the hospital to be interns. We couldn't pay them, but mm-hmm. they could be working with us. And then we started hiring them for career jobs uh, when they got discharged. When they got their medical discharge, we gave them career jobs, and we got 35 or 40 vets working for us or our subcontractors or our owners. At Turner. At Turner. Career positions. We had single amputees. We had double amputees. And vets came in, uh, triple amputees, uh, come in and start working with us. And we were able to get them career positions um, and sometimes they stayed with Turner sometimes it led to other positions with other construction companies or different fields but heck having that re- on was, your resume it filled the void yeah exactly right and I would take groups of wounded vets from uh, Walter Reed Hospital down to Fort Belvoir which was a billion dollar and a half billion and a half dollar hospital we were building and take them out literally in wheelchairs and crutches and show them the project we're building <laughs> and it began, this led to a, a Turner guy by the name of Tom Patchy, who helps run their sports group, talking to me, why don't we do a class in the hospital? We'll give them pizza or something for lunch, because if you give lunch, you'll always get people to attend. Uh, heck yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about careers in construction. Well, Tom's wife is Amanda Weathersby, and she's an entrepreneur. She'd started six or seven companies. Some made money, some didn't, but she really knows that. And we rapidly expanded to uh, entrepreneurs and starting your own business. And this was 
almost 11 years ago, and we, uh, believe it or not, have gotten over 300 vets or their caregivers starting their own business without any government help. That's just amazing. And we do an hour and a half class, and it's not a class. It's where we get a vet to come in or any young person to come in. Sometimes we get Vietnam vets to come in Mm -hmm. and talk about how they took something they were passionate about and started a business, and we bring them in to talk. It's a question and answer type thing. And we have on our website, on 100entrepreneurs.org, we have on our website something like 150 videos, uh, 10-minute videos of how to start a business, how to do a business plan, how to get financing, where do I turn to for help, uh, how to deal with the SBA, yeah, things, things along that line. And we found not only are we helping vets equally important, we're helping the caregivers because in so many ways when a kid is badly wounded, the caregiver goes through just as much impact and stress and trauma as the vet does. Mm -hmm. So they want to start businesses. Wounds aren't always visible, right? Well, and not only that, just because the visible part is healed, the wounds stay internally. There's trauma and you live with that. And the whole thing of what has been called post-traumatic stress disorder, which we now try to term post-traumatic growth or better yet, we've worked on uh, with people from All Marine Radio, something called post-traumatic winning. Yeah. How to deal with the trauma in your life through common sense things that you've struggled with. Bob, Semper Fidelis, what does that mean? Always faithful. You haven't, that's a motto that sort of you've lived by, right? It's in the DNA. The Marine (laughs) Corps goddamn brainwashes you when you get in there and after you go through the... they've done a good job with you because you've stayed pretty loyal to your uh, fellow veterans. And I was only in for eight years, four and a half years active duty. but Only. they do a short. They do a pretty good job. They know, you know what they're the, doing. And the other thing that has occurred to me, the, the, the mascot of the Marine Corps is what? Bulldog. You do, who do, who won't give up with an idea, right? <laughs> and my my wife trains French bulldogs and takes them around Anne Arundel County for all the kids and schools for humane education. <laughs> yeah, you don't give up, and you've remained always loyal. We're going to take another short break. We'll be right back on the fourteen thirty connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Bob Nilsson, president and founder of 100 Entrepreneurs Project. He's done a heck of a lot for veterans, and thank you for doing it. Do you need donations? I need donations. We always need donations. We're a minuscule nonprofit. We operate on uh, peanuts, but we do need donations. We want to keep this going. We want some of the, the vets from the last 18 years to help run this business going forward. We're looking for speakers. And we're looking for sharing the word. Get the word out. Send your friends. Share our information so people will look at our videos, look at our, listen to our podcast, and learn about how do you help a vet that's in the process of getting out of the service and trying to figure out what they want to do with the rest of their life. And for those veterans that are... Men or women, officer enlisted, we don't care. You're all in the same boat. You're trying to figure out how to get going in another direction. And for those veterans that are listening, this is open to you. This is a, Absolutely. I mean, it's such a good group of people. And I, I was so proud to be able to speak with with some of these uh, active duty, still on active duty, but are in, in that limbo period between getting out uh, at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Let me and, give my yeah. email and address. Yes, it's, yes, sir. Uh, my email is Robert, N like Nancy, 802 at Mac.com. Uh, my cell is 917-403-8807. I don't know many of the answers, but I know a whole lot of people that I can direct you to that do know the answers. And one more time on the website. What's the website again? 100entrepreneursproject.org. What does the future hold for you? You've done. Are there any additions oh, to I'm the program? I'm having the best time of my life. I'm just getting started. <laughs> oh, and by the way, for those that don't know, Bob is a local. He lives in Centerville. Right, um, Centerville, Maryland, yeah. across the Bay Bridge. Let's get this Bay Bridge fixed, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all of us want that on both sides of the bridge. All of yeah. us want it, but I, I know uh, Ken Island probably more so than others. We're is suffering. With, yeah. <laughs> Are there any add-ons to the program that you see in the future that might well, be of help? And by the way, when you started, when you sort of went into Bethesda Naval and Walter Reed right. and met with the Marine liaisons and said, "I'm going to do this," and you were originally in 
uh, those facilities. You no longer are. The luncheons are outside, not far, not far outside. Due to the bureaucracy. Due to the bureaucracy, which we all know and love. Do you see growth outside? If you know, out going beyond. I, it, what everybody has to remember: we've been in this war for eighteen years. We've got thirty to forty thousand badly wounded. We got two to three hundred thousand with brain injury problems from IED explosions. Yes. There, we've done a great job of healing them on the outside and putting bones back together and coming up with prosthetics. There's still a lot of trauma in their lives. You don't forget what you've been through. I don't care when you get to be 70 years old, you don't forget what you've been through in Iraq and Afghanistan, the same way we didn't forget about Vietnam. Right. They need help with direction in their lives at time. You can provide that. If you can know of a business opportunity or a startup opportunity or anything along that line, you can help vets. Let us know. We'll get the word out. Do you see, I mean, you've seen now through uh, this period of time, these last 18 years, and you have saw it back during your time in Vietnam. Do you think there's a disconnect in between what maybe could happen while people are on active duty to then being transferred into the VA system. Well, do you think there the, there is enough screening being done while they're still on active duty? The DOD was busy, busy, busy fighting the war, mm-hmm. and the work they put into discharging the vets was slim and none. Uh-huh. It needed vast improvement. Now they paid a lot of attention to this, since it, particularly since they became aware of the the post traumatic uh, problems right. that existed. And they paid a lot of attention to it. But there's still a lot, a great deal. If they put half as much effort into helping a vet when he got discharged as bringing a vet in in. to send him to Paris Island or San Diego, things would work better. Right. And the caregiver. The wife or the male caregiver goes through just as much problems. So we need to help them. And then there's room for improvement. We feel as a nonprofit, we can help support this from the outside. But we're not tied to the VA. We're not tied to DOD. We want to keep that separation. Yeah, what's cool is you have stepped in because of oh, this. Yeah. Uh, there is this And there's hundreds of others. That right. Semper Fi Foundation done great things. Groups like Boulder Crest and Semper Max Farms and Travis Mills, a quadruple amputee up in Massachusetts, that have set up all sorts of businesses that help vets with the transition. They do a great job. Now, as a Marine... You know that some Marines, and I'm, I'm picking on Marines a little bit, but it exists in all the services. You have this, and I have a friend that fits into this category, former Marine. You, you have this stigma, if you're not perfect, that you're scared to admit that you're not perfect. And so you're getting ready to get out. You're, you, you're having issues, but you're, you keep your mouth closed, realizing that I don't want to. I don't want to say anything that can harm my career. I'm not going to let them know all the 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 stuff that I'm suffering from. And so you're you're thrown out. And then by the time you're out, you realize oh, I'm I'm troubled. There's there's trouble. You got to remember, Marine Corps and all those services are training you to go fight a war. Right. And they got to make this emphasis. But once you get in war, you realize that war is far from a perfect thing, and all sorts of crap goes on. And you're going to have to deal with it the rest of your life. You can't hide it. You absolutely can't hide it with alcohol and drugs. That doesn't work. So there's ways to deal with it. And we found uh, all you got to do is go out and Google the Ten Commandments of Post-Traumatic Winning. It's been put together by a guy named um, Michael McNamara, retired Marine, and it's a com- it's on all Marine radio. It's a podcast. Mm-hmm. But it really, really works, and it helps deal with the trauma that you've been through. Even though you've done a great job of hiding it in a black box and putting it in the back of the closet, it helps you know and understand it, and it gets you sharing what you've been through with others, but more importantly, reaching out to help others. So for That's the, the key. For those that are on active duty right now that are listening to this, what would you say to them if they are suffering Silently, I would absolutely go Google All Marine Radio Post Traumatic Winning and take a look at the. I think but it's. Should they be bringing this to their chain of command? Hell yes. Here? Okay. <laughs> of course. And on that note, Bob, thank you very much for joining You're me today. You're welcome. Thank I you. really appreciate all you do. This, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We'll see you next week. <laughs>